Alright, lesson 1-8, Optimizations with Linear Programming. Graph each system of, inequal of inequalities, name the coordinates of the vertices of the feasible region, and then you find the maximum and the minimum values of the given function. Okay, now this is the, the function that we need to graph. Right here it is. <clears throat> okay, let's grab this one first. Y greater or equal to one and y smaller or equal to four. Okay, we have one of this line right here. And the four is right here. Let me draw this line. Alright, now when you grab inequality, you need to shade it, so uh, I, will, I will give you the final shade later once I'm done with, with all of this graphing. So for this moment, keep in mind the, the region of solution is in between this line, so you shade in, uh, in between these two lines. Now, let's continue to grab this line right here. Now, to grab this line, let's try to simplify this one first. So I will have 4y greater than or equal to 6x minus 32. Let's simplify this by 4. I have y greater than or equal to 6 divided by 4. You have 6 over 4 or you have 3 over 2x. And then minus 32 divided by 4, you have 8. Okay? 32 divided by 4, you have 8. Now after that, let's do the graphing. Now when you grab this line, let me transform this into simpler term first. y greater than or equal to 3 over 2x minus 8. Alright, this line. Let's get a table value for this one. x and y, table value. Now when x 0, y is negative 8. But I didn't want to use all the way to the negative edge, you know. I, I didn't draw the graph here for that small uh, number negative edge. So uh, let me try to find something else that make x if if x equal to two, three, negative five. Now let me make x equal to four. Okay. So when my x is four, four times two. Oh, sorry, 4 times 3, 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 minus 8, we got minus 2. So if my x is 8, you have 12. Actually, let me uh, do the division first. 8 divided by 2, you have 4. 4 multiplied by 3, you got 12. 12 minus 8. You get four. So now you have two points to graph the line. So zero or oh, sorry, y four x negative two. So sorry, sorry, y four x four y negative two. So you have x four y negative two somewhere here. That's one point. And then when your x is eight, your y is four somewhere here. So when you have that, let's draw the line. Okay, now where did you grab, where did you do the shading? Okay, so uh, look at the sign right here. Y greater than, so when it is greater than, you shade above the line. Greater than, shade above the line. So this is the region of solution, you shade above the line. Okay, now let's go to our last line. Let me try to convert this into simpler term first you have y greater than or equal to you divide this one by 2 you have a negative 1 over 2x and you also have plus 2 
So you have this line, you need to grab y to the then or equal to negative 1 over 2x and plus 2. But find table values of this equation. Okay, x and y. Now if your x is 0, 0, y is 2. Now when your x is 2, say x is 2, 2 times 1, 2. Negative 2 divided by 2, you have 1. Negative 1 plus 2, you get 1. So let's grab that line. So, 0, y2. When your x is 2, your y is 1. Okay. When you have that, let's graph. Why, 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 why? Should be on the the point. Why it's not like that? Two. Oh, sorry, I make mistake on that. That's why. Should be here. Two. Two one. No, I make it the wrong point. This is negative one. No. Two one here. That's why. So why is something wrong with this? Okay, okay. Now, the region, shading region, this is greater than or equal to, looking at the regional equation, this is greater than or equal to, so you shade above the line. Now, it seems like right now we have a common shading region. So let me erase this one and give you a proper shading of the answer. So you have another point right here as the vertices. So this is the, the shading region. Sorry, not this one. Now we have four vertices actually. You have one, two, three, and four. Now, this all the in this the section of the solution region. After that, let's answer the question. Name the coordinate of each vertices. Okay, let's say well you can represent letter or you don't want to represent letter. That's up to you. Let's just name it right away. Let's start from here. Or just put A, B, C easier. A, B, C, and D. Okay. Now at point A, what do we have here? So this you have starting from here. You have negative four, and then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and 4. And then for point B, point B you have this one 8, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, and 4. For point C, point C you have this one as 6, and then 1. And the last one for the uh, the last vertex, vertex is D, which is 2 and 1. Okay, now after that, you need to find the maximum and the minimum values of the given function. Now to do so, you need to substitute this each of these vertices into this equation down here. Let's start with A first.
double A. So you have this one as negative 6 and you time x which is negative 4 and then u plus 3 times y which is 4. Let me do this one. So you have negative 6 times negative, negative 6 times negative 4, you have 24, so 24, and then you plus with 12, that gives you 36. That's for point A, 36. After that, let's go on to point B. Point B, you have negative 6 multiplied by this one, 8, and then plus with 3 times 4. So you have negative 6 times 8, and then you plus 12, that give you negative 36. So that point C, negative 6 times 6, and then you plus with 3 times 4. So 6 times 6 is negative 6. Negative 36, sorry, negative 36, you minus 12, that give uh, you plus 12, sorry, not minus. You plus 12, that give you negative 24. And then the last point, which is last for this, which is negative 6, and you times by x, which is 2, and then 3 plus 3. Oh, sorry, this is not, this is times 1, my mistake. So you have third negative 36 plus 1, negative 33. Plus 1, sorry, plus 3. This one here, negative. 12 plus 3 equal to negative 9. So, among this four vertices, we can let's find the maximum and minimum value of this inequality system of inequality. So, from here. So therefore, this is the maximum, this is the biggest number, 36. And the negative number, this is the minimum number. So, the maximum, let me write this one for you. Maximum value equal to 36. And the minimum, minimum equal to negative 36. Let me remove this one. Let's move on. Number two. Do the same thing graphing. Let me start by graphing this function or this inequality x in between two and six. So you have two here, right here. Let me draw one line first. And six somewhere here. Okay. After that, let's move on to this one. Let me start by simplify this one. So this one already check, already draw, grabbing. Let me make, make uh, let grab this one. For y greater than or equal to negative x plus two. When you divide this one by four, you have y greater than or equal to negative one over four x, and then plus two divided by four, you're gonna have one over two. Half of the point. Okay. All right. Now let's start. Okay. So this one x is on y. So when your x is zero, your y is just zero point five half. When your x is four, say four. So you have four. Four times one is four. Four divided by four is one. You have negative one. So you have negative one plus half. You have negative half. So let's grab this line. Okay, x0, y half, middle. And then when your x is 4, 
the y is negative half so negative let's draw the line Okay. Oh, by the way, the shading region. This is in between, and this line is all above the line like this. Okay, seems like they are somewhere in between here. Okay. How about our last line right here in the middle here? Let me transform this into simpler form first so I have we working on this line I have 4y smaller than or equal to negative 2x plus 24 okay so after that you divide both sides by 4 you have y smaller than or equal to negative 2 over 4 you have negative 1 over 2x plus 24 divided by 4 you got 6 Let's work on this. So when you x, let's say x zero, x and y. When your x is zero, x zero here, your y is six. When your x is two, two times one, two, two divided by two, one, so negative one, plus six, you get five. Okay. Now let's grab this line. 0 and 6, x0, y6. When your x is 2, your y is 5. When you have that, let's graph. Draw the line. And since this line here is smaller than a quarter, it's smaller, so you shade below the line. Okay, now since like the intersection of the shading of the region of answer is, is fall under, I mean, inside this for uh, this section. So let me try to shade it properly. Okay, that is the region of answer. Now we have four vertices as well. One, two, three, and four. Let me name this one as mm, W X Y Z. You put it here as W X Y and Z here. Okay, now let's name the vertices vertices of this region. So starting from with W first. W. Okay, in W you have 2 and 5. And then X. For X you have 6 and 3. For Y. Y you have 6 and negative 1. And Z, the last one. you have 2 and 0 okay after that now let's try to calculate for the minimum and the maximum value of this system starting from w first okay working on this one to 6x starting with w first you have 6 times x which is 2 plus 7 times y which is 5 okay 12 plus 35 
you have 12 you have 12 plus 35 that have 47 that's 47 and then number uh, x so x you have 6 times x which is 6 plus 7 times y which is 3 so you have 36 you have 36 plus with 21 that gives you 57 point y 6 times 6 which is the x plus 7 times negative 1 which is the y so you have 36 you have 36 minus 7 that gives you 29 and then last point you have 6 times 2 which is x plus 7 times 0 which is y so in this one you have 12 alright now from this value you have the maximum this one maximum 57 and the minimum which is 12 so maximum value maximum equal to 57 and minimum equal to 12 okay now let's continue to number three for the instruction genies make to tell birth cake yellow or oh, we have yellow cake that sell for $25 and strawberry cake okay that sell for $35 now let's see the same side decorating a single required time okay now for yellow cake need two hours for yellow cake so which means two hours you have one yellow cake in which you, you can earn $25 and for strawberry cake it will require three hours to make strawberry cakes so within three hours you will earn $35 because you make one strawberry cake now let's represent first okay I will represent X as the yellow cake let's say yeah, yellow cake and then Y I will represent this as strawberry cake strawberry cake okay so now yellow cake for yellow cake you will earn $25 within two hours for two hours you make one and then for strawberry cake you will earn $35 yeah wait wait okay $35 I'm correct within three hours okay now how many of each type how many of each type of cake should be made to maximize revenue so it seems let me look at for, does it require to make both of them or just either one of them or could be uh, both of them or not just just one either one of them you know let me see first okay so it's it seems like the instruction not required to to make both but it could be possible that it will be you can make both to produce the the maximum profit or just produce one of the two to maximize the profit or the, this is the, in this case the revenue let's see first you have 450 hours so within 450 hours let's see how many of this cake you can make okay so if you're going to do that you just get 200 so within 400 this is within this time period 450 hours if you're going to produce this if you're going to produce uh, produce cake using this hour produce yellow cake alone you will have as uh, 450 you divide by 2 hours that give you 200 and 225 yellow cake and which means that in this case 
your uh, strawberry cake is zero but if you want if you don't want if you want uh, to be used or spend all this time to be used only the yellow cake it will give you i think uh, 450 hours you divide by three that give you 150 cakes 150 cakes now assuming that you're using this hour produce either uh, either one of the cake you know you either producing strawberry cake or yellow cake now let's try to find this profit by producing this uh, cake first let's say well so let's make some shoe of the points in this case now if for example if your yellow cake is 250 cakes at uh, 225 cakes then your strawberry cake is zero let's see how much you will earn from producing only the yellow cake so 225 you multiply by one of yellow cake it cost 25 dollars so 225 multiplied by 25 dollars that will give you 5000 so let me put line like this this, uh, this is the profit five thousand two six hundred twenty five dollars let's say if you produce if you produce only the strawberry cake so which means you have zero yellow cake but strawberry cake is 150 cakes let me see how much you will earn by producing only the strawberry cake so 150 you multiply by 35 dollars the cost of uh, one strawberry cake 35 that will give you 5,000 5,250 dollars all right now it seems like in this case now it seems like we're producing 225 yellow cakes and zero strawberry cake to maximize the profit as you can see using this strategy you produce more you produce more uh, uh, revenue let's see what if for in between this I want to know if you produce the yellow cake and the strawberry cake together will it give you the number which is higher than this okay so let's bring this one up a little bit let's say this time right here you we will produce let me try to find because two hours with three let's say in this case let's say you produce six yellow cake now if you produce six yellow cake you're gonna take you're gonna spend uh, six hours on the yellow cake we could uh, no wait, wait 12, 12 hours sorry you produce six yellow cake you will spend 12 hours on the strawberry cake so in other words to find the time of producing strawberry cake you're using 400 450 you minus the time spending on the yellow cake in this case which is a six uh, cake which is 12 hours after that you divide it by three then you will have 146 for the strawberry cake now let's see what this is we're producing how much will it produce so you work on this for 6 multiplied by 25 and then 146 multiplied by 35 and you plus together so 6 times by 25 plus with 146 multiplied by 35 it gives you a $5,260 right now it seems like our growth it go up like this okay so it seems like the more you try to grow or uh, try to increase the number of the yellow cake it seems like the profits are going up so if you produce more I believe that this prof or this revenue is going to go up also until the time that you return 250 25 cake and it's just going down to become zero so this is always going down to become zero so which means that as in this case to maximize the revenue as you can see the growth of it as you increase 
the number of yellow cake, you increase also the revenue. So as you continue to increase, it will increase the revenue until you reach this five thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollar. This is the maximum revenue you can produce within a given time period, four hundred and fifty hours. So in this situation, where we're trying to do this work without graphing, so as you analyze the given together, we can see that to produce, <coughs> to make the uh, maximum <coughs> revenue, we will produce 225 yellow cake and zero strawberry cake. Yep, let me write the answer for you. So it seems like in this case, in order for us to produce as in, uh, how many of each type of the cake should be made to maximize the re revenue, so you're producing uh, for the yellow cake. We will produce it 225 and for strawberry cake strawberry cake we produce none to maximize the revenue right number four for number four we do the same thing we try to do this without graphing but analyze by uh, analyzing the given. Okay, now looking at the given together. We have the with we freight train hold four hundred four thousand two hundred pounds. Cargo has capacity of four hundred and eighty cubic feet okay we have small package okay let me represent x as small package first so that's easy to see so let's say x equal to small package so, and that small package weigh 25 pounds let's say 25 pounds with three uh five pounds they will consume three cubic feet. Okay, and that, and it charge five dollars. Okay, you earn five dollars on this. Let me put arrowhead. Five dollars. So, X for small package. Twenty five pound with that weigh weigh twenty five pound and uh, take up space of three cubic feet and charge five dollars for each of this small package now so that for y it represent as big in this case use the term big or small they use large so they're using large now for large large package like package that will weigh 50 pounds each and can, and take up space of five cubic feet and that then charges for eight dollars eight dollars all right now let's try to looking at this together all right the uh, the maximum weight that the free train can hold is four thousand two hundred pounds this is the maximum weight one with the given maximum space which is four hundred and eighty cubic feet this is the maximum that it can reach. Now we already have the given. I'll read the question first before we analyze this situation together. Okay. Question uh, Find the number of each type of package that should be placed on a train car to maximize revenue. All right. Same thing question. What will you What will you work on this? Will you How many How many you Will you uh, put on the train car is it should we put all small should we put all large or should we put all combined light and small together so that we can ma maximize the revenue so we need to analyze the situation together to find the maximum and the minimum and what for in between it so that we will know what is the biggest the to uh, what should we do to maximize our 
revenue in this case. Okay, now let's try to think, think before you, we start again. We try to do this problem without graphing. So let's try to let's say that we will put on put all the small package on the train car without using the large package. And after that, we will use all the large package on the train car without using the small package. Let's try to work on that. And after that, let's see what for in between. If you see the it increasing or decreasing, then we can really find the maximum and the, min, the minimum revenue of this situation. Now let's say if we want to put all the small on the car train, how many of the small package can we put on this car train? Let's bring this back again. Okay. Now to do this, to do this part, let's see. Car train are small for small package, weigh 25 pounds. So this is 4,200. So you have 4,000. 200 you divide by 25. You can see that based on weight, you will have based on weight, x is equal to 1, 000, uh, 168 package. But if it is based on the capacity, the space will take up 480. Divide by 3. That we give you 160 package of small package. I'm sorry. So now, which one should we choose? If we choose this 168, it will be too big for this space to uh, to be occupied. Even though it fit with this weight, but it's too large for for this space to hold. So therefore, 168 can accommodate both. Oh, sorry, 168. 160 can accommodate both the space and the weight. So we will. So x 160 is for the number, the maximum number that we can put on the car train. Now for the y. Okay, y one package weigh 50 pounds. So we have 402, uh, 4,200 divided by 50. They give you an a y equal to. 84 package packages based on the weight and for based on the space it occupy 480 divided by 5 that will give you 96 okay now what should we do with this if we getting if we get this uh, this number it can accommodate both of this one but if we get this 96 well it will fit with this space but it's too large or it's too heavy for this so therefore to a number that can accommodate both the weight and the space it's occupied is 84 in other words if x is 160 then your y is 0 in this case if a y is 84 which means that your x is zero. Now, when we have this idea, let's try to find the maximum minimum value. At this point, at the point 160 and zero, what is the the value? What is the the uh, the profit? Oh, sorry. What is the uh, revenue that we can make from? Reduce about from uh, putting all the small packages on the car train. So one small package cost five charge five dollars. So one sixty times by five. So this yeah five dollars times by five that will give you eight hundred. So you will have this as eight hundred dollars at this point. How about the other point? You have zero of this and eighty four small packages of uh, large packages. So you have 84 times by $8 for each of this uh, large pack packages. So you have this as only $672. All right, as, so as we can see that, it seems like we, we, we put all the small packages on the car train, not with the 84, not with, uh, not the large, sorry, let me repeat. So in this case to maximize, as you can see the value, 
to maximize the revenue, we will produce, we will put only the small package on the car train. Because if we put only the large one, you are not going to maximize your revenue. But let's try to test if we try to put combine the large and small together on the car train. Will we maximize it? Will it be greater than 800? Or will be it fall in between these two? Then we can know the flow, go up or go down. So the thing that if we going to produce five, five now let me try five, eight, um, let's say five of this. Let's say it produce five of the small packages. If you produce five of this, let's see how much we will take on this in space and also in uh, weight. So I think if we do a few calculations like we did before, if it's five, if it you can use five of five of this. One is three cubic feet, five gonna be fifteen. So four hundred and eighty you minus fifteen. You have only four hundred and sixty five. And then you divide by eight, uh, sorry, divide by five. That will give you ninety three, right? It, basing on the way, this is going to be ninety three, but ninety three is too big for this number because the smallest one is eighty four. So ninety three, we're not going to take this as the value for the large package. So we work on the pound on the weight so 5 of this 5 so you have 2 or 25 times 5 they give you 125 and then 4200 minus sorry 4200 let me repeat so this number working with the with the capacity so it's not gonna fit with this the space that need to occupy too large for 84 so we work on the pound, the weight of this large package after we produce, we put on five of the small package on the car train. So for 4,200 minus 125, and then we'll divide by this 50. So we produce only 81.5. We use a uh, sound within the ball with this. The more we produce this, the lesser you we produce this one. So let's see how much we will earn in this case. Will it bigger than this or in between this number? So after that, let's try to represent in size. So one of these charge five dollars. So we have five and five twenty-five dollars plus one of these charge eight dollars so plus eighty one point five times by eight dollars so it seems like you're producing six hundred six seventy seven dollars all right so this value is in between these two value eight hundred and six hundred seventy two so it seems like you have this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value in this case the revenue so as you can see the flow the more you increase this the more you increase the revenue. So as you continue to increase the number of small packages on a car train, every time you increase it, every every time you will increase the revenue as well. So as you continue to increase it, the revenue will continue to increase until it reach the 800. And that's when you have zero of the large package and the car train has only the small package. So in this situation, to maximize the revenue, you will produce only, you sorry, not produce, you will put only the small packages on the train car. So, question how many of each of package you should be placed on a train car? So, for you, we will place 160 small packages. And 
zero and zero large large package okay and what is the maximum what is the maximum revenue per car tra per train car as you can see a while ago the maximum value and the maximum revenue is $800 for each of the train car okay so our last number in this lesson which is number five okay number five Read the instruction together first, situation to see whether we need to produce one of these or both of these together. Using plastic to the plant processes up to 1,200 tons of plastic per week. At least 300 tons must be processed for food drink. Let's say food drink, X for food drink. Actually, food drink container. Food drink con containers, and it is at least, so it should be bigger than or equal to 300 in this case, as in ton. And you will earn it one per the profit, the profit of. Of producing food, uh, this is a word, word for let me read 300 for food containers. All right, now for food containers, profit per ton for producing food container is 17.50 dollars. That's a food container, and then for why, why does it why represent us drink containers? Okay, drink. Containers. Now for drink container, why in this case it at least bigger than or equal to 450 tons, and you will earn $20 per ton. $20 per ton. Okay, now let's look at the situation. Must we produce all of this or just one of these? To maximize the profit, let me represent at least must be processed for container while at least must be processed. All right, so the use term must be right here. I think maybe that's the key word here must be, must be here. So, which means that we have to produce both of this together. But the question how many of this should we produce to maximize the profit in this case? Okay, so we must produce both of this because. At least must be pre-processed for food container and 450 ton must be produced for drink container. So we have to produce all of these together. The question again, how many sh should we produce each of this? Alright, now let's start first. Let me beginning with this. This is the smallest value of food, smallest number of ton that we will produce for drink container. Uh, is this food drink container? Yeah, food drink. Sorry, food food container, not drink. Mm, mm, a mistake. This is a food container. Okay. So this is the smallest number we will produce for food container, and this is the smallest number we will produce for drink container. All right. Let's say. Let me try to represent this as the food container and drink container together now, if we are going to produce 300 let's say let me put the value and this is a 117.50 x that for the price each ton will be used for food con container 
plus with twenty dollars times with y, which is the price that we produce, or we call the profit that we earn from producing uh, each ton of drink container. So when we have this equation, let's try to find the lowest one for x. So let's say in this case, if we produce only the smallest number of this, so we have 17.50, you multiply by the smallest number of x, which is 300, plus 20, multiply by, now in this case, uh, we have 1,200 tons. So if we produce 300 of the food container, then the rest we belongs to drink container. So drink, so 300 tons, you still have one more 900 tons of this. So let's see how much you earn from producing using only the smallest number of ton on food container because this is the smallest one, the borderline. So you have 17 you have 17.5 multiplied by 300 plus plus with 20 times by 900 and that will give you 23,250 dollars if we reduce this much of this one. Now let's say you we try to increase this a little bit more. Now we will try to test more a bit on this. Let's say and now I try to increase the number of tons on producing the food container. So in other words, let me put another one. I will use seventeen point fifty. I will increase this by ten tons or let's say by of uh, by hundred, so I put this one as four hundred ton producing on this num on this uh, we call a food container twenty dollars. Now, if we using four hundred tons on food container, then the rest of the way, which is eight hundred, will belongs to the drink container. Let's see how much we earn by producing this. 400 tons of food container and 800 tons of drink container. So 17.5 multiplied by 400 plus with 20 multiplied by 800, you have only $23,000. Okay, now as you can see, the moment you increase the number of uh, the number of of tons of food container, the lower you will get your profit in this case. So the more you increase the number of food container, the more you decrease the profit you earn. So therefore, as you can see, if you continue to increase this, you will decrease this continually as well. So the more you increase this, the more you decrease the profit. So therefore, this is the maximum value of this. So, how much should you question? Let me read the question. What is the profit if the plan maximize processing? All right, they don't ask for how many food container, how many drink container. They're asking for what is the profit. So therefore, the profit is, in this case, 23000 Two hundred and fifty dollars.